Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to justify an existing external masonry wall that has had some internal alterations which affects its stability. Basically what's happened here is a homeowner has removed or altered their internal layout by removing an internal wall. Now this internal wall would have been providing lateral stability or lateral restraint to the external gable elevation wall and that is the wall which we need to check because the stability has been compromised. I was asked to check this wall about three years after it was built so you can understand the predicament which I'm in. Um, my initial feeling was I'm gonna have a really hard time justifying this but obviously you got to give it a go. So what I'm going to show you is how I managed to justify it by using hand calculations and this probably took me about an hour or hour and a half to do. Not exactly a long time but then I'm also going to show you how I managed to do it in Master Series and how it was so much quicker. And the main reason I didn't do it in Master Series right at the start and did it by hand was because I didn't have access to Master Series at the time of having to do this. Okay, so I've drawn a very quick plan. I did go to the house, visit the house and take all these dimensions myself. And so what we've got on the left hand side of the wall is a window. And then on the right hand side of the wall we've got like a double double door basically uh, to give access to the garden and in the middle here we've got a new steel beam running over where they knocked out a hole in the existing wall and they've essentially left a little pier so what I'm hoping for is that the pier is sufficiently stiff enough or strong enough to withstand the lateral loads imposed from wind loads so all my calculus are going to be based on checking the bending the shear and the axial loads on this pier. Okay, so the first thing I checked was the existing beam, the beam which they installed to form the new opening. And I'm not gonna go through it now. I've done a video on how to do a steel beam design. So go check that out if you wanna go through that. Okay, so the first thing to do is to attribute load to the pier. And I'm just subdividing the panels adjacent to the pier and working out the line load based on a wind pressure of 0.5 kilonewtons per meter squared. I'm also noting the beam end reaction and the amount of wall load above because that actual load or that gravity load is going to help with providing resistance for the pier. To work out the bending resistance you need the section modulus. Now for simplicity I just wanted to do it really quickly so I just used the section modulus for rectangular section. This pier is an L shape so by assuming it's a rectangular section I'm reducing the amount of material so I'm actually being a little bit conservative here. So if it works based on the smaller section, then I won't need to check it for the full section. Only if it failed would I go back and work out the section modulus of the L shape. Using these simple formulas found in the red pocket book, you can calculate the moment resistance and check it against the design moment, which you calculated earlier. Likewise, you will need to check the shear and the actual force, which can be found in the red book as well. Since the bending, shear and actual checks all passed, that means that the pier is sufficiently stiff enough and capable to restrain the uh, existing external wall. Okay, so this is Master Series Masonry Designer. I've already done a video on this. Um, it is really, really good. I recommend people giving it a go. Um, I'm not gonna go into too much detail on how to do it, but I'm gonna try and uh, do the example or do the actual uh, design and talk for it at the same time. I'm going to turn off auto solve just to speed things up a little bit. Uh, the code we're designed to is Eurocode. <clears throat> so basically we're just going to run across all these tabs um, starting with the wall setup. Um, it's not a cavity wall and I believe uh, the width is 5.73 meters. One height 2.8. Uh, I'm going to do the stiffened wall bit later. The thickness of the wall is 170. And let's go to edge fixity. It's a single leaf pin, pin, pin. I want it all pinned because I believe it's on it's on the ground floor. If there's DPC and for conservatism, because I don't really know, make the base pinned. Uh, masonry unit. Let's assume I'm, I'm pretty sure it's brick, but 
to be conservative, I'll use block. I'm pretty sure that brick is gonna be stronger. If it works in block, it's gonna work in brick. But let's just try using blocks first. Uh, do group two, class two, initiation two. Um, let's assume a very, very low strength and see what we get because we don't know the masonry strength. Uh, masonry unit, what have we got here? Uh, oh, we did this already. Uh, mortar, let's try M2, you know, the lowest it can be. Wall loads, um, I think if we go something like five and two, <clears throat> point loads, I'll do this later, out of plane, so our wind load could be point one, uh, point 0.5, uh, don't have any in plane, don't have a wind post, we do have openings, so bear with me, this might take me a while because I've got to use my calculator at the same time, uh, so starting with the first one, uh, it's the window and it's 0.74 from the left hand side uh, I believe this is probably going to be about one-ish I might change it later um, the width the width is 1.36 and the height of the window I believe is about one meter and we'll say it's two-way spanning uh, and there's the window and I think we can change that to 1.2 so, so it's about 600 mil head above the window so maybe could go a little bit more so maybe we could go 1.4 and then let's add the door as well so the door and it's measured from the left hand side meters it's 1.82 meters uh, no, that's zero 1.82 and the height uh, is gonna be 2.4 again let's assume it's two-way spanning let's see what we get <clears throat> uh, so master series here is telling me it needs to be designed it hasn't been checked uh, let's just quickly see what we get when we design it analyze it so so it's analyzed it I haven't put the peer in and it's failing so the utilization is 1.1 so it's failing so let's put the peer in so we go back to I think it's all set up and uh, I think I'm going to cheat a little bit so if I do stiffened wall yeah so basically it adds peers at centers um, technically I've got return walls on on either side but let's just assume that i don't so i think i can trick it into basically saying that i only have the one pier in the middle so i think if i just input the pier dimensions so wp is the full width of the pier so if we assume again uh we're only doing the rectangular section so it's 230 tp is the fitness of the pier including the fitness of the wall so the total Fitness TP is 285 plus 170. That's 455. Uh, so CCP, I think if we do that as zero, I get rid of all the other peers. So we've only got the singular peer. So let's just make sure we've got the right dimension. This peer needs to be basically bang on the edge here. So if we did 7360. I think if we did 2.2, does that work? I think. No, because that's the center of the pier. So if we add half of 230 in, 215, and that should give us the right pier yeah, spot on. The pier is bang on the right, the right um, position. Let's close that. I don't actually know what OR1, OR2 means, uh, but looking at the diagram, this looks correct. This is basically what we've got. Let's analyze it 
and let's see if we pass. Give it a minute. Hey, happy days. 0.641 utilization. And just for completeness, let's uh, add on the point load, which should be fairly straightforward to do. So if we go back to point loads up here, uh, so GK is dead load. Uh, so if we've got a dead load as two, live load uh, 6.8. Uh, so see so X, X is the width, uh, width of the pad stone. So I believe the width of the pad stone is the same as the width of the pier, so 230. Uh, B length is the bearing length. Um, So I think the beam is 100, so let's go 100 width. Uh, BW is the bearing length. Again, let's assume that's 100 mil. Uh, length is 230. Oh no, uh, sorry. That is the distance. So the distance is uh, the same, so it's 2.215, I think. So yeah, it moves the diagram for you, and that looks basically bang on. In the middle there, it's S, uh, the spread SP is spreader, I think. SP is uh, spreader length, same width as the pier. Uh, spreader depth, uh, let's call it uh, two and five, is the same as a pad stone. Um, spreader thickness, which I think is this one, even though it's labeled as T. Um, again, I think that's going to be same as the pier. So. Uh, what was it? Uh, 285. Not that it really matters, and X intensity is going to be zero. Let's put that in there, reanalyze, and it should be pretty much the same, probably slightly less. Yeah, so it's the utilization was slightly lowered because we've added more actual force, and based on the calculations and the design, the more weight or load that you have coming down on it, the actually the better the moment resistance, but that means you also got to do the actual load check as well. So you can see just how quick doing this check was in my series um, compared to doing it by hand. So by hand, even though I was doing it pretty quickly, it may have taken me about an hour, hour and a half just to write up the whole calc. It's not exactly a long time and you know, fees and everything, I probably would have still easily made a decent profit, but you can definitely see just how quick it is to do it in master series. Um, now, so say it failed using block work, um, because I know it was brick, I could change the masonry unit to, instead of concrete block, to clay or, or you know, stone, aerated blocks. Um, so it's got a decent choice, or I could mess that out with the, the strength. But I've basically gone as low as I can with material properties, and it's still passing. So this would have satisfied, satisfied building control. Um, client was happy with my hand calc, building control was happy with my hand calc. Just different methods of doing it. Obviously, using software, it's going to be quicker. But you know, at the time, I didn't have master series, so all I had to do, uh, I could only use it, use do it by hand. Ted's also wasn't giving me the right answer because Ted's matrix designer sucks. Um, would never really recommend it um, other than really basic masonry calcs. Um, but yeah, it's just going back to the basics, um, and that's how you justify um, an alteration in. Uh, in a house, alteration to an existing wall, you know, changing the lateral stability, and this is uh, kind of how you justify it. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video, and hope you, you like and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.